But I got these. Oh, there's a stink bug. My family calls it my superpower. It's my ability to see value in things that other people might overlook. Sometimes I go picking with my boyfriend, sometimes it's my best friend Sue, and sometimes it's my kids. But at the end of the day, it's all about having fun and hopefully just maybe making a profit. Out on the table here in front of us, we have everything from our recent trip to the estate sale, and some of it is on the floor. Uh, but we're going to go over all of this stuff with you guys now. Uh, but I do want to preface this by saying that a lot of this stuff is artwork. Um, we have a lot of quilts, we have some artwork, and it is one-of-a-kind pieces. So for us, putting a value on that is kind of difficult. Uh, we just have to judge the artwork ourselves and say, well, I know we can at least make this much money on it and hope that we make more than yeah. what I, one of my original guess is. Um, so we are gonna go over that stuff, but keep that in mind when I don't give you guys a, an actual like, well, I'm gonna make this much money on it. Uh, but we're gonna go over this stuff with you guys. It's a lot of stuff, so please bear with us. It's gonna be a long one. Yeah. <laughs> but, but so we went to an estate sale the other day. Andrew went first to scope it out and see if it was worth me riding over there after I dropped the kids off at school. And it was, he, uh, he texted me and said, you need to get over here. So I, I went over there and he had already grabbed like two box, you had two or three boxes already loaded yeah. up. Um, Cause he was there right when they opened. So he was one of the first people in the house, grabbed a bunch of stuff. And then I showed up like an hour or so later and went through and grabbed some more stuff. So um, I guess we wanna go through the stuff that we got together first and then we can touch on the stuff that you got by yourself. Whatever, I would just say we just grab whatever and just go through it. Okay. All right. Because I can't tell, I can't remember what's <laughs> from what day, and I mean, some of it, yeah, some of it, no, I just, yeah. Because yeah. he did go back then the following, well, two days two later. Two days later. Two days later when it was make an offer day. Uh, we didn't get back on the final day because we had the flea market, but he did go back and on make an offer day and to get some more stuff, so. Yeah. All right. Our total spend for the first day was $795. It was a lot of money, yes. <laughs> but I can't tell you exactly what we paid for each individual piece. So keep that in mind as we go through this stuff. Now I'm going to start with the jewelry because that was one of the first things that I spotted when we went through the door. Yes. We paid 20 for that one. We paid 20 for this amazing buckle. And that is like, I, I just, it's yeah. It's focusing on your face. Get off of his face. I don't know what's the deal. It with loves this. me. There we go. So this was one of the first pieces that I grabbed. I saw it in the case and I was just like, oh my goodness, I have to have that Art Nouveau brooch. Yeah. Um, now the stones do appear to be glass. Andrew looked at them through the loop and they have little bubbles in them from the glass making process. Yeah. So they are not precious gems, but. I'm gonna tell you what, for 20 bucks, that was like, yeah. Yeah. Um, we have there was no in. argument. There was no argument. No. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, right, right off the bat, though, I'm like, I like that, that, and that. And we were already up to $60 right when I walked in the door. Yeah. Um, so we paid $20 for this. And uh, I was pretty pleased with that. It's on eBay right now. I think it's already at $75. With good reason. Because yeah, it is I mean, a, it's, a phenomenal it's an piece. amazing piece. And for a piece that isn't precious, uh, the detail is just phenomenal. Yeah, there was a lot of effort put into that piece. A, a lot of the times when you come across these, the detail is just kind of muddled and it's not really fine detail. So this piece is just phenomenal. Very pleased with that. Another piece that I grabbed out of the nice showcase was this bee. I want to say that was also $20. It was, yeah. So this is just a little bit plainer. It's a bee pin, probably about the same era. Uh, maybe a little bit later, actually, judging by the, the pin there. Um, but it's just a little honeybee. Little honeybee pin. I really like that one, yeah, too. Yeah, that pretty cool. Um, so we paid $20 for this one. Uh, we have it listed up on eBay, and it's already at 40 bucks. That's crazy. So but it's, I, it, it's, 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 I was really piece. happy with the jewelry that was there. Yeah, I mean, even for costume jewelry, it's always important to look because some of the costume jewelry you can still get good money for it. And a lot of people just overlook costume jewelry and they're just looking for the precious. But it, the subject matter of the costume jewelry 
It counts. Yeah, I mean, for example, that little white one. Yeah, look at Okay, we'll do that one next. That, 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 that was in the dollar box. <laughs> so this little piece here was in the dollar box, and I noticed it because it is a jelly belly. So what that is, and we've talked about it before, is it just has this little cabochon. 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 <laughs> right in the middle of it. You can see kind of this little stone right here. Now they come in all sorts of critters. There are mice, and there are little dogs and cats and fish, and they just have this little stone in the middle, and it's called a jelly belly. This one specifically is marked Trafari. Now, people kind of dismiss Trafari. There was a point uh, I want to say milk glass in there. Probably. It looks like white milk glass, and, and it's even enamel. and even and even the little white are those enamel or are those I'm not little. I'm sure on that. Those are pretty cool though. But I mean, like ten years ago, Trafari was selling. Even the costume Trafari was selling for really, really good money. And the prices have come down, like with all the antiques and collectibles. But there is still value to them. This little fish actually sells between forty and fifty dollars. So to pull this out of the one dollar tray, yeah, it's marked Shafari. Yeah. And actually, one of my first big turnarounds uh, when I got into reselling was a little cat Shafari brooch. I was telling you about that the other day. It was a rhinestone brooch, and I paid two dollars for it, and I sold it for a hundred. You know, but that was back when Shafari was was a lot really higher. Expensive, yeah. Now I think that same brooch sells for like twenty bucks. So. <laughs> But it's something I always look for because it was one of my first, you know, big flips was that. So, um, this piece right here, another twenty dollar piece that we pulled out. I love the micro mosaics. Yes, I am obsessed with micro mosaics. One of the first pieces of jewelry that Andrew bought me was a micro mosaic, a giant. You guys have seen me wear it in videos. It's a giant pendant. Yeah. Um, it's a micro mosaic. But the micro mosaics you come from Italy. Of, you picked that out of Georgia's. Yeah. yeah. They come from Italy and a lot of the times the soldiers would bring them home when they were over there um, serving and they'd bring them home for their loved ones. This one has a, the, a picture of a little girl on the inside. I didn't take her out, I left her in there. Um, I think she's adorable. Yeah, no, I have no idea absolutely. who she is, but I, I just I just feel like she kind of belonged with the piece. If I was to keep it, I would I would probably still leave her in and just, you know, if I, if I was to put another picture in there, I'd just put it in there with her. Yeah. That would be what I would do because I'm sentimental like that, you know? Yeah. Um, but. I'm not even going to attempt to open it, but it, and it's got a nice little round. Yeah. So it can, can hang it. That's what I was thinking. It could either be hung or I guess if you really wanted to, it's about the same size as the pendant I wear. You yeah. can wear it. But uh, it is a beautiful little piece. And, and then and then you could be walking around and, be, and people would be asking you, oh, that's a really pretty piece. Who is the little girl? And I know. Like, I, don't yeah, know. I don't know who she is. Um, but uh, what was I going to say? Oh, a lot of the times when you come across these micro mosaics, a lot of the little pieces are missing. And this one seems to be in really good shape. But it also seems like they may have glued the pieces back in. I mean, just like didn't glue, glue them back in, but just put a little bit of glue on there to keep them in yeah um, but uh, yeah I love it I love micro mosaics yeah that's, that's really pretty so it's gonna uh, be really tedious to sit and yeah put that yeah. together they're really neat though um, this is another piece it's not focusing on Andrew I liked this one because it was crude uh, which is furthered by the little attachment on the back the little pin is also very crude and it's copper too it is it? it's copper it's like a hammered copper but it's like a little impala or yeah, gazelle yeah 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 it's just a, a crude mid-century looking piece so i grabbed it it's not marked anywhere i believe we paid this was this was out of the one dollar too i think so yeah yeah so this was out of the one dollar bin as well and uh, i just like the look of it you know even for being unsigned i just like the aesthetic yeah. So I grabbed that. Um, this one, again, I liked the aesthetic because it's actually, I think, an upholstery tack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I think this is an upholstery tack, but uh, let's see. I just liked, I liked the design on it. Yeah. And so I grabbed it. And I'm sure, you know, somebody who's artsy enough and, you know, you could probably make this into something. You know, you, you know, you could make it into, I don't know. Pendant or, or something. Somebody who's crafty like that, like not me. Okay. <laughs> same and then, thing with that. Yeah, so I paid a dollar for this as well. My my, it was, I had the same thought with this piece. You know, somebody who appreciates 
jewelry and is crafty could possibly do something with this. And it's just a little cameo. Obviously old. Uh, but I'm not sure. A lot of people were suggesting it was Queen Elizabeth. Hmm, let me see. Maybe Queen Victoria. I'm not sure. But I thought it was a nice piece. I, I do believe it's glass. If it's going to be a queen, it would be Queen Victoria based on the period. Um, yeah, that could very well could be. Yeah. Absolutely very well. I wish well I had the be. other earring, but again, you know, you could repurpose it and do something with it. We could even do a quick Google image search for Queen Victoria cameo earring. That's exactly right. That, you're so smart. So that was the jewelry that we got. I was really pleased with those pieces and we've already made all of our money back and then some. So from there, I grabbed this. And we still have a bunch of stuff. Yeah. That hasn't been listed yet. That's right, we do. Um, so from there, I grabbed this guy. He is a planter of a donkey carrying a wagon. I come across these a lot and usually they're a lot smaller. Uh, I like that this guy was blue. I don't know what it is with me and blue donkeys these days. It just seems to be a reoccurring theme. Mm -hmm. He's marked Italy. He's got some nice artwork on him and I'm not sure of his age. Uh, I, just, I do believe he is vintage, however. And yeah, he's just kind of nice. Paid. I do know we paid like $4 for him, I think. I believe it was $4. And I'll probably expect to make 35 to 40 on him. So, not bad. Put him up front, out of the way. Yeah, it's really nice too because like, they were, they were very helpful. Um, if I had a bunch of things in my hand, like when we were done at the jewelry case, he was like, oh, I'll put all that stuff up front for you. And I was like, yeah, it's great, cool. And we got to continue shopping and mm -hmm. we didn't have to get interrupted. Yeah. Because... And we didn't have to keep making trips back. Yeah, there. because every, you know, every time you got to stop, you might not get back to the spot that you were just at and you could miss something or somebody could hop in and jump in and grab something that you might yeah. have grabbed. So it was really helpful that, that they would do that. And he was, he was bouncing around all through the house answering questions. Um, given history on the on the stuff in the family, um, it was it was pretty cool. It was nice. They put on the state sale. It, it, it was yeah. it was very well done. And a lot of very people well were done. complaining about the prices of the stuff and what we were paying, but honestly, for the quality of items that we were getting, I feel like we were paying fair prices. Yeah. Maybe even for resale. Yeah. I um, mean, I mean, is the profit margin as high as the flea market stuff that we buy? Absolutely not. No. In some things. There was, there's a couple good pieces here that yeah. I'm going to do okay on. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm, I was happy. Me too. And it very was fair. Nice. They were very fair when I went back the second time. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so from there, what else did we get? I guess I'll go over the quilts real quick and then I'll let you jump in. Okay. Um, actually, well, listen, I'll just go through the pile I have here. So from there, I went out to the living room where they had a bunch of cruel and I was kind of just digging through it. One of the pieces I grabbed was this, and I did pay $20 for this, but it is fantastic. You know, it's more birds with a tree that looks like it's got strawberries. And, there, this and, is not and, a strawberry tree. This is more like a cranberry tree. And, and it is the tree of life. No, this is a cranberry tree. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that that is tree of life <laughs> scene from the book of Revelations. You're silly. Um, I really liked it. And that's what the viewers were commenting. Yes, I know. In some of the comments, and, and I, I think they're, I think they're right. I think on the other one, yeah. That I, mean, I think with that's the, lion, the one they're talking absolutely. about. Yeah, but this one, I think this is just. Uh, I think it's. I just think it's a different way of doing it. Okay, fine. It's possible. It's plausible. Okay, fine. Um, this one is not finished, unfortunately. They did not finish it. Uh, you can see where they stopped, and there is actually still markings on the fabric where they would have continued. But I think the bulk of it is done. I mean, really, they were just finishing off the sky in the background. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was really all they had left was yeah. the background. Yeah. Oop, right, right, right above the uh, antlers. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so they were filling in the background with this blue thread and then just stopped. So I believe this is already at $40, so I paid $20 for it. I doubled my money. I'm pleased with that. Totally worth it though. I mean, it needs to be in a frame. 
The strawberry tree. The strawberry tree! So here's my theory. It's not really a strawberry tree, it's a strawberry plant. And those are midget animals. Oh. They are like characters from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Um, so <laughs> this is Jacobian style. What is Jacobian? That is what it is called when it has like these weird flower trees. Okay. Now a lot of people were suggesting that the dog is actually a bunny, but I'm pretty sure that the little dog is wearing a collar. It's not, I'm sorry, not a bunny, a, a sheep. They were suggesting this was a sheep. No, that's definitely it's a dog. It's definitely a dog. It's definitely a terrier dog because it has a collar on. So I don't know if this was maybe the owner's pet that they decided to just... Maybe this was like their rainbow bridge cruel. Like their dog passed away and this was... They had a Sheltie though. Did they? Yes, there was pictures well, of Reggie. Maybe this is an older piece. There was pictures of Reggie all over the house. It was cute. Um, I'm not sure how much this would go for. I know right now I think it's also sitting at $40. I believe we paid. I forget. I forget too. Uh, but unfortunately, oh, some of twenty. Yeah, probably something like that. Some of the some of the green is bleeding into it, and I detail that in the listing. The green thread is kind of seeping a little, but I really liked this piece. I thought it was just different and funky. And yeah. how often are you going to find a piece like that? Yeah. This is one of a kind. Like you're never, I've never seen one like it. I will probably never see one like it again. There was a dog and a lion, and a deer, yep. frolicking under a strawberry tree. Pretty much. Uh, so this With piece, birds watching overhead. <laughs> this piece is one of our uh, more expensive pieces that we bought, uh, including the painting that I bought for myself and the table that I bought for myself. Uh, this is also cruel embroidery. This is a coverlet, and it has a bunch of birds on it. And I we paid $75 for this. I'm not going to pull it. I have everything all oh, okay. nicely folded. <laughs> Um, if you saw the video, you saw me pull it all apart. Uh, but this is really another nice. piece of cruel. And this woman was so incredibly talented in her artwork. Like, her quilts, her cruel, it, it was just phenomenal. And I couldn't help myself but, like, buy it all. I know. <laughs> I know. So, this piece right here, I paid $75 for it. I knew I could get at least $75 for it. And right now, it's sitting on eBay, I think, at 200 so there is a little bit of discoloration on it, but it's not horrible. And I did not attempt to clean it because with these really dark, deep colored threads. Are you worried about bleeding? Yes, because I, I see what happened with the strawberry tree. And you wonder what quality thread she was using and when she was doing this. And it makes me concerned. Yeah. So I'm leaving it to the buyer who hopefully knows. I mean, if I was to clean it, I would throw it in with like five shout color catchers, but I just, I, I'm not yeah. gonna attempt it. Nope, not for me. Not a seventy. If it was a ten dollar piece, I'd yes, be like, and that's yeah, the other chuck thing. it in and try it yeah. out. Yeah, when when we purchased, piece, like I just bought a quilt the other day at the flea market for like five bucks. That yeah. one, I have no problem throwing it in the wash because it's a five dollar investment, you know. Um, but a piece like that where we have seventy five dollars into it, no thank you. And this is another fun quilt that I bought. Uh, I believe we paid 45 for this one. Snail trails. Snail trail. <laughs> I was calling it Crazy Octopus Tentacle Quilt, and I was corrected by my viewers that it is Snail's Trail. Thank you for that. <laughs> I just thought it was really unique. I had never seen this pattern before. I had no idea what it was. Now I have. And I, I think it's really cool and the work that must have gone into this to do these little curly cues oh, yeah. is just really yeah. quite impressive so this is a really nice quilt there is one little tear on it that i think somebody who is good with a needle and thread would have no problem fixing because it's not a big tear it's it's other than that it's in really good condition for its age so this one i believe is at like 50 bucks yeah. So really we nice and we piece. paid like forty five for it. So it's okay. Yeah, I it's mean okay. it's we're, I mean, we're early on in the auctions anyway, so I'm not. I mean you have to remember too, and this is something I try to get across to a lot of people is like okay, so yeah, you've got fifty bucks into one quilt. It sits at forty five. Say it sells at forty five, but the one that you've got what? Yeah. So forty into. Yeah. Is it two hundred? Yeah. 
You know yeah, what I mean? So it all, it, 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 all, yeah, it all works out. It all cost averages out. Um, now this one, I liked because it was so massive. It's like 100 inches by 92 inches. It's just huge. This pattern, uh, thanks to my viewers, I learned is um, hourglass. This is called an hourglass pattern. And it's actually somehow a quarter square because the squares are so tiny. They're not your typical sized quilt or square. Uh, so unfortunately with this quilt, the reds, and I've noticed this a lot in buying quilts that for some reason, and maybe you guys know the reason for this, it's usually the red patches. And I don't know if it's the dyes or the chemicals used Where in the red dye. Where falls apart. Yes. It's usually always the red patches that start to deteriorate. It makes sense. And so in this quilt, um, I mean, it's 100 by 92, but wherever there's a red patch. I mean, and I'm looking at squares around See, the red like patches. This red patch is good. The, around the red patches that are like yellow. Yeah, the yellow is good. There's nothing wrong with those. But the red, like, see here, yeah. this red is completely gone. Yep, this red's starting to go, but the green, and there's no problem. Yep. The white that's right in with it, there's no problem. Yeah, it's the weirdest thing. Yeah. But this could be a cutter quilt, and by that I mean, a lot. somebody had asked that in the comments. You could make pillows out of it. You could cut it down. Since it's so large, maybe you could cut it down and even make it like a twin size quilt if you could find the right configuration to make it work. Uh, you could also, if if you know what you're doing, maybe even just replace the little red triangles and make it good again. I don't know. I don't know if enough about quilting. I just know when I like them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I really liked this quilt, and I don't think we paid too much for it because it's it's in pretty bad shape. It wasn't one of the more expensive ones. Before. Yeah. Now this one. Um, this is not the last one, but the other one's in the wash still. The green and red one, but. Uh, so this one I don't believe is as old as the other ones, as my viewers were pointing out. Uh, this one has this, I guess you would call it variegated uh, thread because it's different colors. It goes from dark green to light green. Yeah, and that's it's actually relatively like. relatively yeah, modern. It's like, yeah, it's like medium. It's like a dark, a medium, and a light. But what's interesting about this, Andrew, is look at that. It's your strawberry trees. Oh yeah, with the bird and the <laughs> strawberry tree. Yeah, so, um, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see that, but the design on this is actually the strawberry trees and they used thread to make little cross stitches. And design it. Yeah. Yeah. So this is just a weird one. The backing is satin. <clears throat> I don't know, it's like a satin feel. I'm pretty sure it is satin. And I just thought this was neat. I'd never seen anything like it. And so when I haven't seen anything like it, I usually was jump at the opportunity, you know? Like, oh, that's new. I'll grab that. So I paid $40 for this one. But it was something I'd never seen before. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think that's pretty much all of my quilts and stuff. Why don't you talk about something? Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> we got a bunch of stuff. This was cool. This was this was a nice little deal. Oh yes. My my five dollar deal. Ah, let's see it. It was the it was the little platter. It was sitting inside the mm -hmm. bookcase. And we've got what's up, Mr. Queen of England? <laughs> and and I'm not sure if this is Prince Charles. I think you should do the entire video with that accent, please. Or is this W? This could be W. This could be W. I'm the Queen of England. <laughs> I'm gonna get the little peanuts, guys. But yeah, they don't was... have accents. No. Oh goodness. No. That was good. No, I like this. That you almost just broke on the table. It's actually Rocky Man. RockyMan.com. Yeah, he's got his own website. I think it's a nice dish. I, yeah. I would have actually thought it was mid-century because it's kind of a mid-century style. But the pile for five bucks, yeah. you know, and I looked the kids get some toys up. to play with, and I know that'll yeah. bring at least, what? 18 to 20? Yeah. I mean, that's what his, his stuff is listed for on eBay. I didn't see any sold, but he's got his own website. I'm sure most people looking for his pottery go directly to his website, so. These are really cool. Um, that house was driving me nuts. I was reading the comments. Yeah. 
and they had the dog in the house, but the house had been closed up for several months, I think since December. And over the last month and a half, they've been in there working, setting up the sale and going through things, throwing things away, whatever they got to do. But it was, it was rough breathing in that house. And every time they would move or sell a carpet and shake it out, oh, uh, I was dying. I was dying. But I grabbed these. Oh, there's a stink bug. Hold on, I'll go get rid of it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was like a cute little charm, and it was that actual. Well, there is. Charm. There's a little. I know, and I'm looking little, at like, it, and I'm like, oh, look, there's cute little bug charms on there. Oh my gosh, that's a real bug. That's a stink bug. Here, you grab that one. There's there's a little um, ladybug charm on that one, and this one's got a honeybee. And it's also got these little tiny glass beads sewn into it. These were three bucks a piece. It's a cross stitch, yeah. I mean, aren't they? They're they're really they're really pretty. Mhm. Mm and I like the frames that they're in. They look they look right in those frames. I like the honeybee and then how she did the honeycomb. Yep. In the center. Yep. That's cute. And then this one is on a flower. Yeah. A little ladybug. And there's little flower. glass beads intertwined with this too, which is really cool. So yeah, for three Very bucks talented. a piece. Um, it looks like somebody took the back off of this one, but yeah. I'm sure just a piece of cardboard wedged in there would fix that just probably yeah. just fine. Um let's see. I did grab some books. Oh, I gotta restart this guy's gonna quit. We're already at 30 minutes. <laughs> It's crazy, There's a, and we have so much stuff to go through. I know. <laughs> um, I did get some books. I did get some things for myself, like this one on Antietam. Um, but these were cool. This is 1876, which would have been the centennial, 100 years. Um, and these are like souvenir books from the centennial. 1876. Mm -hmm. That one's got a name in it. And this one, I think this one's got the map in it too. Yeah, this one's got the original map in it, which the other one doesn't seem to have. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I'm gonna pull that out and go over those. But these were softback books. These were a dollar a piece. Hmm? So I have to look these up. I'm not quite sure is what they go for, but I would guess they gotta be at least $20 pieces. Yeah. Um, you're talking centennial, 100 years after the revolution. That's awesome. Uh, I did get some reference books for us. This one is the old China book. This is Museum of Early American Tools. I know like some of the things we find when we're out metal detecting the rusty iron, we're not sure what it is on an old home site. Yeah. I thought maybe something in there might pop out. Uh, Battlefield Atlas of the American Revolution. This guy was a one-star general. He was a brigadier general. Um, he had a lot of military stuff and it was, it was pretty awesome. Yeah. Let's see. Confederate edged weapons. That's actually a, like a 10 to $15 book. The hardback books were only like three bucks a piece. So, I mean, you can't go wrong. Atlas of the American Revolution, huge edition for three bucks. Mm. Um, this has got massive, massive maps in it. You love maps. I love maps. This one's got massive maps. This one is going to get resold though. Um, I'm going to keep the smaller version. It's a lot easier to handle. This one here, this is impressive. This is like even more impressive than the, the bird book or the Native American book. This is uniforms of the United States Army. This was put out in 50 something. But the size of this is ridiculous. And the color prints that are in this thing are insane. And they're huge. And they're all revolution prints. That's awesome. Mostly revolution. They go late, a little bit later, but yeah. This is, yeah. I just, I, I, I can't even with this. This is, I don't even know. This is an awesome book. So, three bucks, I grabbed this. This one's gonna go up as well. Cool. 
Now I'll have to take a look because the house was, like I said, closed up. They had issues with the heating system. Some of the books do smell musty. Um, usually I can throw them in a box for a couple days with some dryer sheets and it takes away the musty smell and I give it like a nice wipe down with a little alcohol on a, on a rag where I can, when I can, if I can to get any mold off and it'll kill the mold as well from coming back. So I'll do them before they get listed and uh, we'll take care of that. But yeah, there's some really good books there. What else did you see that you grabbed? Um, let's talk oh, about these things. That was one of the things that I grabbed when I went back. Yes, I had my eye on this and uh, I really liked it. But I decided to leave it because they wanted $20 for it and I just didn't... You weren't feeling know. it. Well, not for 20 bucks. Um, so we left it there and then Andrew went back for it. Uh, it does have a mark on the back and I wasn't familiar with the mark. He brought it back and I did look up the mark and it is Royal Vienna. Uh, and it is, oh, I can't remember the name. Oh, it's her men in, I don't know. Uh, but I'll put that down below. I'll put the maker down below. So it, it is actually a really nice piece, especially that is made by Royal Vienna. And I would have never guessed that. I'm just like, what is that mark on the top? Yeah. But I liked that it had the inside, you know, the stamped too. This is one of the pieces that Andrew grabbed <laughs> earlier in the morning, and I saw it, and I was like, oh my gosh! And when we were checking out. They're like, oh, Villeroy and Bach. I wonder if that's anything. And I was like, is it? Yes, yes, it is something. <laughs> it's very good. So uh, it's this platter, and we were discussing the berries and. Uh, pine needles at the top. Yeah. Whether they were juniper or yew tree. Yeah, I think they're a little bit more purpley, so I think they're more made to be. I, I, I would, would get, hope that they were juniper berries because yew berries are, are apparently poisonous. very poisonous, and I don't know why you would put yew berries on a platter that you were going to be serving food on. Like here, have this food that I've put on this plate that depicts and it's got some age poisonous to it. berries. That thing's got some age to it. It, oh, absolutely. That's an amazing piece. Yes, it is. It's phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> so that piece, I would expect to at least get $65, and that's being very um, conservative. <laughs> gotcha. Very conservative. There was another piece on there, a platter, that was 395 best offer accepted. And that was a platter. All of the rest that I could find were plates. Finding another platter, I could not. That's crazy. You said that very weird. Um, so let's get through this stuff because we're at 40 minutes. This was also an interesting piece that Andrew had picked up. Yeah. Uh, it's, I don't know, it's weird. It's like this combo. It's got this. It's like a, it's like a bowl plate. Yeah, it would probably be a centerpiece. They would probably put fruit on it. It would probably have gone Fruitful. in the center. Yeah, in the center of a table. Just as like a console. But the markings on the bottom are what are very interesting is that it's got a bird and this oriental ivory. I'm assuming that is what the pattern name is for this. It is like it's it's just very ornate. It's got age. It has the the code here that depict that would tell us what the actual age of the piece is, right. but I did not bother to look it up. So eighteen hundreds. Usually that code Yes. It, it, yeah, eighteen hundreds. Yeah, no, this is this was cool. I, I liked it. I was happy to grab that. Yeah, so I'd say at least 40 for that. At least. This piece is another piece that I snatched up for $6. I do remember that. It is a satin glass, milk glass shade. Mm -hmm. With a baby spider on it. Oh, kill the tape. Okay. Squish. Um, so this, kind of, it just hooked itself, didn't it? Mm -hmm. So this would have, oh no, it it, now it completely familiar. unhooked. Darn it all. So these little hooky things hook onto this. Maybe. If it's suspended? Yes. Interesting. Which doesn't really make sense to me because I'm thinking, well, how do you attach the light to it? Oh, there we go. So it's like a, a light fixture. 
but there would have been a light that went down. I don't know. I'm kind of confused by this. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I'm, I'm the crazy lamp lady, but this one's got me a little perplexed. Yeah. I don't know what's happening here. I don't understand either. Unless the light goes up into it and somehow attaches at the bottom. I'm but not sure. But then you have a cord hanging. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's happening here. Is it like here. an early form of a hanging lamp? I don't know. Missing the base and the cord mm. and the guts? Unless it's an oil lamp. No. And then I wouldn't have a cord. I'm thinking that it's early enough that it, it may actually be. Yeah. Mm, yeah, it's not electric. It was not an electric lamp. I will tell you that. There was no cord involved in this. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a it's, shade it's some for sort an of, oil yeah, lamp. Yes. That's what it is. Yes. But I don't know. I don't know how the apparatus would all connect and work. So right now, and it's just a shade. I don't know. It's pretty fancy though. It is fancy. It's really nice. And for only six dollars, I was pretty pleased with that. Everybody was giving me a hard time in the comments because yes, I was reading some comments. Oh, you're not allowed to respond. Though. I know. I've responded to one comment. That was a nice comment. Anyway. Um, everybody was giving me a hard time about not grabbing the crystals at a dollar. Yeah. Piece. Seriously, you know how much those are worth. No, I really wasn't sure. Like, I thought you said they were like two, maybe three bucks a piece. Like three to four bucks a piece. Oh, okay. So I'll just snack. I'm sorry. And, and the longer ones like that are worth even more. Okay, I'm sorry. If I'd have known that, I would have bought every one that was there. You should have. Especially if they're not chipped. The reproduction ones aren't as nice as the actual antique Darn. ones. Okay. Nicely done, Andrew. Okay, look, I'm, I'm st there's still stuff I'm, I'm learning. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. It's I'm not the end of the world. so mean to me. It's not the end of the world. I'm not going to lose sleep over cry. it. Um, this is another piece that Andrew grabbed. You need to buy me sausage now. I'll buy you a sausage. I definitely marry It is a salt glaze little planter. It is not marked. There's a reason I bought that at the house. It's because there is a marked piece that looks very similar oh. in glaze and color. And Would it be this little sheep? Yes, that is Eldrith. Eldrith pottery, which so, we learned about when we bought our jack-o'-lantern. No, I don't know. And we find it everywhere now. I don't, well, Spoiler. I, at the flea market this week, there was a lot of that stuff, but it was all Colonial Williamsburg reproduction. And I noticed that the pottery on the Williamsburg stuff is a lot lighter in color. And this this darker yeah. gray pottery that's in both of these. Yeah. No, I like our little sheep. This probably would have come from the nativity set that Eldrith Pottery makes. Um, he's a little sheep from the nativity set, but you only paid a dollar for him. So. Yeah, he's. Uh, there's only one other sheep online. They're asking thirty for it, um, but there was another creature similar to him that was sold for twenty five. So I'm thinking in that. 20, we'll say 20 to 30. Somebody who lost their sheep out of their nativity set is going to need a new one. We've got him right here. Or if you want an extra because your sheep is lonely. Yeah. Sheeponly.com. Sheeponly.com. <laughs> <laughs> For your lonely sheep. <laughs> Talk about this. This cool. It's a neckerchief slide. It's scouts. Um, it's resin. It's, hand, it's, all, it's actually all hand painted. So this would have came ugly orange yellow color that's on the back. Yeah. And they painted it. And they painted it. Unami Lodge is the oldest order of the Arrow Lodge. 1916, I believe, is when it was founded on Treasure Island. Hmm. And it was just air metal detecting yes, a few weeks were. ago. So this is really important. Um, the WWW is there's three different... The website? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, <laughs> it's three different Native American words. Um, they don't teach everybody the three words it's like it's like a, like a code for the organization like mm. you, you have secrets that you keep and the three w's are secrets the only one that the first one everybody knows the first one we mucked and d8 i don't remember what it means but everybody knows the first one and you just revealed the, secret. the last two i wasn't order the arrow so it doesn't count i wasn't in the click to get in um but my kids in it and these, these pieces are sought after, mm -hmm. uh, especially Unami because it's the first lodge. So, and it's a vintage piece. Um, I'd expect 10 to 15 bucks for this piece. Okay. And I paid three. Uh, what else? Yeah, let's get through this. I'm worried about our time. Uh, this piece. Ooh. Ooh. Darn it, I hate when that happens. 
Oof. Got I was getting a little too excited. It's fine. Nothing happened. This piece. Okay. Goble. Yes. Dolphin. It's about 30 bucks. 30 bucks. Paid 10. Paid 10. Not bad. Um, I just, I don't know. I like the color of it. And I know Goebbels and the Hummels are real soft right now. Yes. They were a lot more popular, a lot more expensive, but the subject matter popped out and the colors and everything. So. Puppy Planter. You paid $3 for this. You could expect to get 8 to 15. It's cute. He is very adorable. Never say no to the planters. <laughs> This basket weave majolica made in Japan. You can tell by the weight. It's not horrible. You don't have to make that face. Okay. Uh, it's just a little dish, a little dish. Uh, it is marked made in Japan on the bottom. It needs to be clean. It's very dirty. Yeah, I think it'll brighten up the color too Absolutely. once it gets the dust yes. off of it. Um, I actually feel gross touching it. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Where did the hand sanitizer go? The kids were playing with. Um, so this piece, I would expect probably to get 18 to 25 for. Uh, if it was made in England or Portugal, we could probably get more for it. But it's yeah. a Japanese majolica piece. It's still really pretty though. It is very. And that's pretty. why I grabbed it honestly. <laughs> I grabbed that out of the cabinet too. I, love this. I think that's Portugal. Yeah. With the uh, running dog. It's so fun. It's got its tongue out, like it's like so excited and happy. Uh, paid, do you know what you paid for this? I think the mugs are like a buck a piece. Yeah, probably, that's usually what mugs are. I adore this, this is so fun. And the mark on the bottom is like this mermaid dog. It might have even been two bucks a piece, even even at that. Yeah. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't help myself It's a fun that. mug, I don't blame you at all. Uh, and Port Portugal has some really nice pottery, so. Uh, this piece, probably eight to 15. Nice. It's a nice mug. It's a little wonky. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Um, Bailey Banks and Biddle? Bailey Banks and Biddle, a uh, department store in Philadelphia. And they would have different companies, like Haviland would make Limoges for companies yeah. um, for the department stores. And this is this was made specifically for Bailey Banks and Biddle. Um, this one's from Bavaria. Mm. It's got birds. birds. We love birds. And so this is a bird plate. I would expect probably eight to twelve for that. It's a dessert plate. And these are limoche. They match. Kind of. Limoche. These are Bailey Banks and Biddle no, no. as well. No, these are different. Just, they all have birds on them. Yeah, these are different oh, bird same pattern. Thing birds. But these have that. Yeah, kind of. Sided. They're not round. Yeah. And that these, there were ten of them, and they were three dollars a piece as well. Hmm. I mean, this was this was some high end fine china back in the day. This wasn't yeah. this wasn't cheap garbage. No, they're nice. They're yeah, they're absolutely. There's some wear on them, but they're really nice pieces. This like I don't. Did you look this one up? Because I kind of feel like this is a little bit more modern. It is modern. Um, made in they're Hungary, still it. but I just I don't it's know. A nice piece. I thought it was pretty. Yeah. And it, it, I think it was like a buck. Yeah, so I'd probably like, get ah, hey. uh, eight to twelve for that. For a buck, why not? Yeah, no, I love I love the delicacy of the reticulated. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, even even if you're mass producing that, you still got to put a little bit of time into doing it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they did a good That's job. Nice. Uh, I went shopping in the kitchen. I got a Civil War period. Had a Civil War drawer for a dollar. <laughs> Yeah, these um, these are eight to twelve dollars yeah. in that range. Uh, Reenactors like them because they'll carry them with their gear, um, or if they're at an event, they set up a tent. They'll have these things actually out because they're inexpensive artifacts that you can actually get your hands on. Uh, let's see, cartridge box. This is a patent eighteen seventy eight. Fraser style cartridge 40 I'm sorry 5070 caliber and this was New Jersey National Guard and the patent information is stamped inside here you have the cartridge slots up here mm -hmm. and this would have been worn on the belt here and this is a brass plate on the front this I paid 110 for yeah um, I can expect anywhere between 125 and 150. 
It's a little, you know, profit margin wasn't high, but it's got some great history to it. Yeah, you awesome. know, where it came from, you know, the collection it came out of belonged to a Brigadier General. Yeah. You know, hey, so that's cool. It's Indian Wars period. And I think what I'm going to do is I have a, I have that Indian Wars cup. I'll put the two pieces together as one thing to kind of sweeten the deal a little yeah. bit. Because um, I don't have much into the cup. And then you get two Indian Wars pieces. So. I like it. Yeah, that's a good cool piece. I like that one. Let's talk about this. Okay. How do you feel about it? I liked it. It's art glass. It must be from Morano. <laughs> Just kidding. It's Love art. you, Mary. Um, so this piece right here, when I first saw it, I thought uh, that's a made in China piece. It does not have the quality of a Morano piece. However, the reason I grabbed it and decided to grab it is because it's dated and signed. It's 2011. Yes, and it is marked on the bottom. D. Sheridan. So yeah. there's actually a name on it. So we know it's not a made in China piece. They had it priced at 10. Yeah. Which I thought it was, is. Yeah, it's an art glass piece. I thought it was reasonable. And mm -hmm. it's not ridiculously heavy that it's going to be so expensive to ship. I mean, I'm standing here. I'm sitting here. Yeah, the chalet vase. Two, is like two fingers, and I can hold this yeah. thing, and it's not. It's not a chalet vase. Is no, what you're saying. no, it, it's not that <laughs> heavy. This thing probably weighs, I'd say, maybe three pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Or no, I would pounds. expect probably to get twenty-five for it, twenty-five to thirty. It's really pretty, and I love the purple. The purple is nice. With the orange and the yellow, this is like total Halloween fall. It is. It is a nice piece. Perfect time. It's of not year. the quality of Murano. That's what I'm getting at. It's not the quality of Murano, but it is a nice piece. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we that agree was a, on that. So that was a good grab. Yes. Cool. I would have grabbed it for ten bucks. Okay. All right. I like that. Um, I like grabbing some of the colored vintage bottles. This is an amber strap side flask. For a buck. For a buck. Strap side. These, this I can get about 10 bucks out of. Yeah. 10, 10 to 15, depending on the day. Be cloudy. Because it's a large size. Looks this dumb. is an applied top. And yes, it does look like it came out of the ground. Mm. It's got some really nice bubbles in it. I don't see any damage. No, it's nice. This it's a is, nice piece. Yeah, for a buck, I couldn't yeah, believe that. Absolutely. Um, this is one that I just, it's really throwing me off. Um, I don't know if it's modern or old. It's got the old style and the design with the calabash flask shape with the flared lip. And this flared lip is a separate piece of glass that was laid on and then tooled. Um, the pontal is gone. It's, it's so smooth and polished. I mean, I would lean towards this being modern, but it was a dollar. And if you can't afford a $75 to $100 Calabash flask, mm -hmm. and you want a nice example of that shape, that's fine. There's yeah. nothing. It is, I, it's got no bubbles in it. That's, I can't find, I don't see any bubbles. And your old glass one of the things that's indicative of old glass is the bubbles. Yeah. Yeah, there's no bubbles. That's weird. Yeah. But for a buck, yeah. I'll I'll pick it up. I know I know. You could put flowers in that. It would look really pretty. Yeah. Because it is a base. This is another one I grabbed. This was a buck. Our shoemaker and company, oh, Philadelphia. Oh, we a battery already. Are we really? Yeah. And I don't have another one charged. Fourth and Race Street, Philadelphia. Yeah. They were just a drug and oil company. We might have to come back to this. I don't think we're going to get the full video. No, no, no. To be continued? I think so. To be continued? Yeah, unfortunately. All right, well, we will continue this at a later time. We will probably have a outfit change, but our battery is about to die, and I don't have another one charged. So we'll see you guys in a bit. In a little while. In a little while. In a bit. And we'll finish this video. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay, we are back. <laughs> it's been a lot longer than it seems. There is now a cat. <laughs> Ta-da! Okay. Um, the last thing you were talking about was a bottle. Yes. 
our shoemaker and company, Fourth and Race, Philadelphia. Uh, they were a drug and medicine company. Okay. Um, I found them in a turn of the century lit directory listing. Okay. Um, it's not an expensive bottle, but it's just it's for a buck. The medicines you can't go wrong. The embossed medicines. Uh, silver dollar. Mm -hmm. um, melt on it. This is a commemorative silver dollar, so it is the same weight, diameter, and fineness as a like a Morgan or a Peace dollar, one of the old ones. This is a proof. It is made for collectors. It is not made to be taken out and fondled. Um, this particular one retails for about 20 bucks. Um, melt on it's roughly $13.33 and for $14 I paid a hair over melt which is fine because there's always a premium on silver dollars. Okay. So I was paying $14 a piece for silver dollars when silver was $2 an ounce cheaper than what it is now. So I'm happy with that. Okay. Uh, speaking of silver, mm -hmm. speaking of, don't buy inscribed pieces. Yeah, right. Not all the time. Um, this actually says Linda Doan Von Trott, November 21st, 1942. Well, we know it's not the cat eating the birds. That's a good thing. That's like, this thing is just like definitely like putty. <clears throat> Hurry up. All right. Anyway, so they had this priced at $4. Well, it's 3.87 troy ounces, thank you. Troy ounces. Of sterling silver. Birds. Cat, are you hungry? Do you wanna go play? All right, so. The birds wanted seeds. For four bucks, we have 3.87 troy ounces of sterling silver, roughly $60 in milk. Nice. For four bucks. Nicely done. Um, just got to know what you're looking for. And let's see. It is a sale. It is priced. I'm buying it. Uh, you know, that's that's the goal is to buy things that you can flip for a profit. Yeah. And it would be, I could pass that up. What else? What else? What else? Oh, you got you grabbed those. You wanted those. Tupperware. You know, I remember having these as a kid, and so it was kind of a, of a nostalgia thing. And I figured if there's no resale value, then my kids can use them. And there really is no resale value on these. I mean, there's a set of four listed right now for five dollars plus shipping, and I paid five dollars. So, <laughs> so I'm thinking I'm gonna hang on to these. Uh, I like them. My kids can use them. It'll be fun. I don't think they've ever used one of those trays before. Mm. Now we got this <laughs> Basset Hound little picture. Yeah, it got, actually has the thing on the back where it sits up. We gotta send that off too. Yeah. Uh, we got this for our friend Donna uh, at Moon Doggy Coffee. She does fundraisers for Basset Hound Rescues, as you guys know. So um, we're gonna send this up to her. She might hang it in her coffee shop, but, or she might auction it off. That's I fine too. Whatever. We're fine either way, but we yeah. just want to make sure it gets to her because yeah. it's basket themed. Yeah, I got a couple other things I have to send off to her anyway. Yeah, usually so. we accumulate enough to fill a box and then we send the box off to her. So we're getting pretty close now to sending her a box and then she sends me coffee in return. <laughs> Alright, um, I'm just putting other stuff on the ground. This is one that I'm super super excited about i was absolutely like when oh, i saw this painted, yeah. i don't typically go for reverse painted stuff it's not super valuable it usually has condition issues uh, the subject matter is usually all the same it's usually like a nighttime scene and a windmill no, I don't know. I, I come across a lot with windmills for some reason. I think that's just my own weird thing that I come across. Uh, but usually it's a landscape, I would say. I, I've never come across a piece. Make that thing stop purring. I can't make it stop purring. It's like a little purr monster. <laughs> I've never come across a, a piece with subject matter of people. And so I was very excited about this piece. And there's minimal damage to it. Now, people who, who buy these and collect them, it's to be expected 
that some of the paint will have chipped away and there will be some damage. It's just, it's old and it's on the glass and you know, it rattles around and stuff and it happens. But the, the core subject matter right in the center is good. There's no damage to the people. It's all around the edges that there's a little bit of chipping here and there, but I absolutely love this so much. I actually said to Andrew, I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to sell that. Well, it's funny because I was down in the basement and I actually saw that, picked it up, looked at it and went, wow, that's really cool. I don't know how she's gonna feel about that. And I was like, well, you know what? I'll wait till she gets here. And I walked away from it and then you got there and somebody else must have picked it up and moved it and moved it upstairs because you saw it upstairs and it was hiding and you were behind excited. something else i think they might have moved it because they wanted it and i found, found it and i'm like i have to have that uh so this piece right here because it's subject matter that i've never seen before i honestly can't say how much that piece would go for these pieces typically go for i want to say 65 to 85 just your standard boring pieces but because this one is special I don't know what it will go for. I'm excited for that one. But again, I, I had a really hard time parting with it. I was even right before we listed it, I said to him, like, maybe we should just keep it. But then in my head, I'm thinking, our total spend was $795. And if I just keep this stuff, I'm not going to make my money back. So I listed it and it's for sale. I'm keeping two pieces. One of those pieces is right here. Let's see if that breaks anything. Um, Oh, that was that. Oh, that was yeah. That was from the first trip. There. My painting that I paid eighty-five dollars for. That was in really rough shape. It was in really rough shape. Now I was able to get some of the mold off of it using my own cleaning techniques, and some of the colors are now popping. We're not going to go into the cleaning technique only because <sighs> you it guys may would die. It, it well, not only that, but it's not going to work in every situation, no. and we don't want to give you information. We want to give ideas. Yeah, we don't want to give you information that you could potentially damage something with if you don't know the entire scope of cleaning yeah. and restoration. Yeah, so, um, the, but what I did to clean it, it's not really like a huge fix. So I am going to look into getting it professionally fixed, uh, especially with the bowing of the canvas, which you guys probably noticed. Uh, that's not something I am able to fix because it looks like the canvas is stretched like, ooh, like it was leaning against something so it has kind of a bow in it and that's not something I want to try to fix myself. So I'm going to look at getting this professionally fixed but I'm not sure what the cost on that would be. I, I suspect it will be pretty steep. So it's a, if it's a piece that I'm keeping myself, I don't mind doing that. If it was a piece that I was reselling, I probably wouldn't invest in getting it professionally restored to yeah. resell. I'd probably sell it as is and then let the buyer decide to do that. But no, this is one I'm keeping. It is Mark Shepard, 1879. So I was super pleased with that. I had to have it. I'm, you know, I'm not going to lie. I was apprehensive because of the, the mold situation. Um, the mold is gone now. But, you know, it really matches that, that bedroom set that we got. So... So, uh, 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 cool. Uh, I like it. Um, I think we've, <laughs> yeah, I think we've gone through most of the hard goods. Now we do. I do have a question. For this I mean, a lot oh, of the stuff yeah. that's left is books and awards and stuff. But um, this is the last art piece. This is another one that we left. And when Andrew went back, he grabbed this one. This was one I. I it's Jazz, not hands. <laughs> Jazz hands. Jazz hands. You gotta do it like this though. You gotta do it like this. Jazz hands. Jazz hands. Kitty, can you do jazz hands? Kitty's like, I'm just gonna lay here and purr. <laughs> Kitty's sleep. feeling much better now that we've had it to the vet. Antibiotics, eye cream. And you know what? It's it's ridiculous because this cat lets me manhandle it. I've never seen a cat so submissive. Like I can legitimately lay this cat on its back. It. It's just like putty, and it goes it's, and grab its belly and rub its belly, and it will just lay there with like just I'm a cat. But and I'm its not vaccines a cat. are on Thursday, and then it's going to live with Sam, and my brother. Yep. Happily ever after. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> this is pansies and gloves in front of a window, so. And it is a she. Yes. Oh, the cat is a she. I'm calling it mittens. I'm gonna call it Karen. They want to call the cat Karen. Because they have a Kevin. 
they have a Kevin and they're like, we should name this cat Karen. And when we took it to the vet, they're like, what's its name? And I looked at them and I said, cat. <laughs> Cause I didn't want to tell them that Kitty. his name was Karen. We'll call you anyway, it is marked 1972. It is not terribly old, but I did like the artwork. I thought it was a nice piece. So for this piece, I would expect to get at least 40. Um, and I, I think it was marked 40, and that's why I was hemming and hawing over it. But uh, Andrew was able on the make an offer day to bundle it with some other stuff. And so he got, he got a little bit of a discount on it. So we'll see how that goes. Because of its size, it's going to be a little bit more expensive to ship. So I don't expect it to go super high. Super high because it's larger and the dimensions are going to affect the shipping cost. So other than that, we got a bunch of the medals and plaques that are going to your friend's bar in Philadelphia. Yeah, so Fiddler's Green Tavern in Northeast Philly. Um, he's got, it's a military theme bar. He's actually been in like 20, 20, a little over 20 years. Um, he was Pennsylvania, he is Pennsylvania National Guard, Cav Scout, served under this general um, was General Von Trott. He was a Brigadier General, but he served under him in Bosnia. So the stuff has sentimental value to mm -hmm. it, too. Um, and uh, he did have a couple interactions personally with the General. Um, one was lunch, and the other one was a field-issued Article 15. We won't go into that. Um, but that means to say, he got in trouble. But needless to say, 20 years later, he's still in the service and doing well for himself. Um, and he just had nothing but nice things to say about the general and um, so yeah so this stuff will get hung and it'll it'll get passed along and saved awesome so anyway that is our haul from the estate sale should, not including what should I do my document oh your document oh that's like that's pretty, hiding that's back like there behind important. that other thing it's right behind me yeah oh my gosh oh and that too this was from something else oh that's right never mind I'm getting everything mixed up. It's because we're so far ahead. Oh, okay. All right. So here's the deal. I have not taken the back off of it yet. Um, it is dated 1797. It's heavy. The frame is old. The frame job is old. I'm stand up for this. You see on the back there, it says uh, whatever Dutch colony. This is proof that there. Hollanders... Oh, this old deed proves the fact of a settlement of Hollanders in Pennsylvania. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Now, I think you paid 100 for this. Yeah, I wound up getting that for 100 It does have a mold issue. I have to take the document out. I have to get the mold taken care of. Yes. Um, but the signature that's on there, the major signature, is Thomas Mifflin. Thomas Mifflin was the first governor of Pennsylvania post-revolution. Um, he was a brigadier general, hence why the brigadier general probably had it. Um, but he was also national Pennsylvania National Guard and Pennsylvania governor, um, and he was also an aide to General Washington. Very cool. So he served during the Revolutionary War, and Fort Mifflin in Philadelphia is named after him. So, pretty cool piece. And I was looking up de similar deeds like that. There are similar ones available. And they're 300 bucks a piece on up. Mm. So. That's a really neat piece. Yes. I'm glad you got it. You were drooling over it on day one. I know. There was another <laughs> one. There was another one, that large size one. That, that was done on vellum, which is sheepskin. Um, and I've got some documents like that already. They're not super desirable. It, you got to find the right person that wants to decorate with that. Yeah. But they are really cool. Definitely really cool. All right, well, I think that pretty much sums up our video, but we got some really great stuff at this estate sale. I have no doubt that we're gonna make our money back and then some. It's just a matter of getting it all listed and keeping Sam busy. She is right now listing stuff, so <laughs> crack the whip. Yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, um, we will see you guys tomorrow for our shopping video. Yes, come here, Kitty. Say, I'm going to wake you up. Say bye-bye, Kitty. Say goodbye. Bye bye. Goodbye. <laughs> that poor cat is just like, I want to go to sleep now. Good time for sausage. Okay, bye bye. Sausage. Bye bye now. Sausage. Bye. See you tomorrow. My family calls it my superpower. It's my ability to see value in things that other people might overlook.